And good day, my wonderful students. Today, again, we will be discussing chemistry uh, under the Ministry of Education, Kaduna State e-learning platform. Our topic has been a series on acid, base, and salt. Today, we'll be concluding this lesson and we'll be discussing salts. When you say salt, what comes to mind ordinarily is the table salt that you use for cooking at home or the table salt that you use for seasoning your food. But in chemistry, we have different type of salt. We'll be looking at our discussion based on the definition of salt, types of salt. As you can see numbered, we have method of preparation of salt, uses of salt, buffer solution, features of salt, and lastly, water of crystallization. Now under the introduction, like I was saying earlier on, when you say salt, what comes to mind is that thing that you use for seasoning your food or to make your food tasty. But in chemistry, we have different type of salt. As you can see them in their colors and texture. You can see yellow, green, and so on and so forth. So apart from the salt that you use for cooking at home, there are so many other types of salt. So what is salt? Today you'll be learning what a salt is. Now to define a salt, we say a salt is any substance that is formed when the replaceable hydrogen atom in an acid is completely or partially replaced by a metal or ammonium ion. Like I said, a salt is any substance that is formed when the replaceable hydrogen atom in an acid is completely or partially replaced by a metal or ammonium ion. As you can see in my example, you can see an acid HCl, hydrochloric acid. When you replace the hydrogen in HCl with a metal, the metal can be sodium for sodium chloride, potassium for potassium chloride, calcium for calcium chloride, and ammonium for ammonium chloride. By that, you have replaced the replaceable hydrogen atom in an acid by a metal or ammonium ion. You can see another example, tetraoxosulfate 6 acid with two hydrogen atoms there. And you can see it when you replace one of them with sodium, you have sodium hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6. Or when you replace the two of them with sodium, you have sodium tetraoxosulfate 6. As the case may be, you can also see potassium hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6 or potassium tetraoxosulfate 6, exhibiting that these hydrogen ions can be replaced partially or completely. Now, in our next discussion, we'll be looking at the different types of salt. We have five basic types of salt, and their names are normal salt, acid salt, basic salt, double salt and complex salt. As we go on, I will explain these types of salt one after the other and with examples. The first one is the normal salt. The normal salt is formed when all the replaceable hydrogen atoms in an acid are completely replaced by a metal. And it can only be achieved when there is sufficient base to completely neutralize the acid. So you can see from what we have here that HCl reacting with sodium hydroxide, it will give you sodium chloride plus water. You can see in sodium chloride there is no hydrogen atom, meaning that all the hydrogen atoms have been replaced completely and sodium chloride is a normal salt. Other examples of normal salts are sodium tetraoxosulfate 6, potassium tetraoxosulfate 6, potassium chloride calcium chloride just to mention but a few meaning that you have so many other examples if you lay your hands on authorities your books you'll be able to come up with so many other examples now another type of salt is acid salt an acid salt is formed when there is a partial replacement of the hydrogen atom in the acid by a metal when there is a partial replacement when i mean partial replacement it means when the hydrogen atom in the acid is not completely replaced and this is only possible when there is insufficient base to completely neutralize the acid when the base is not enough to completely neutralize the acid so you have the formation of acid salt if you look at the example here 
you find out that H2SO4, which is tetra oxosulfate 6 acid, reacting with potassium hydroxide. Now, one potassium replaces one hydrogen. So you can see there is still one hydrogen in that salt. And it becomes potassium hydrogen tetra oxosulfate 6 plus water. The presence of that hydrogen there indicates that it is an acid salt. Remember I said an acid salt has the replaceable hydrogen atom partially replaced, not completely replaced. And I can also go ahead to say acid salt can further undergo neutralization reaction to form a normal salt. Meaning that if you add more base to the reaction, a normal salt will be formed so that you can see the acid salt there, potassium hydrogen tetraosulfate 6 plus the base potassium hydroxide. You can see here the hydrogen atoms is completely replaced and it becomes a normal salt. So other examples of acid salts are sodium hydrogen tetraosulfate 6, potassium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4, calcium hydrogen tetra and trioxocarbonate 4 and so on and so forth. My wonderful students, I know you've been enjoying this presentation and I, chemistry is usually very, very interesting to listen to. Just exercise more patience as you'll be getting more tips on what a salt is. Now the next type of salt is a basic salt. Like the name implies, it's formed when there is insufficient acid to completely neutralize the base. A basic salt is formed when there is insufficient acid to completely neutralize the base such that if you look at the example I have here, I have zinc hydroxide. Now the hydroxide which is the OH group is the characteristics of the base such that if hydrogen replaces as chlorine, their chloride there replace one OH, you have zinc hydroxide chloride and that hydroxide in the salt there makes it a basic salt. It makes it a basic salt, meaning that that salt still have a quality of base in it. Now, the basic salt can further undergo neutralization to give you a normal salt, meaning that if you add more acid to the reaction, more acid to the reaction will lead to the formation of a normal salt. So that zinc hydroxide chloride plus hydrochloric acid to give you zinc chloride, which is a normal salt, plus water. Now, after basic salt, we have double salt. Like the name implies, double. A double salt is made up of two simple salts. And you can do it by double salt are formed by crystallization from a solution containing two salts. Double salts behave in solution as a mixture of simple ions. Now, these double salts have two cations as you are going to see later. And when you mix this salt, uh, usually a hot concentrated equimolar solution of two salts will give you a double salt. I said that uh, of which they are composed and double salts are composed of two cations. Remember I mentioned that earlier and said they are prepared by mixing hot and concentrated equimolar solution of two simple salts. Equimolar here implies to equal concentration as regard to molar concentration. So some examples there are, you can see uh, iron, uh, sorry, iron ammonium tetraoxosulfate 6, which is a double salt. Majorly, majorly, our alums, the alums that we use are double salt. And you can see that the alum you use for coagulating your water during water treatment is potassium aluminium tetraoxosulfate 6 dodecahydrate and uh, that is the 12th water of crystallization in that substance. So it's an example of a double salt. The two cations there are potassium and aluminium. Now the other one is complex salt. Like the name implies, it's a complex situation and we're not going to talk too much about it but I'll just let you know that a complex salt is made up of a central metal ion. This central metal ion is usually a transition metal and is surrounded by ligands. And your ligands can be your water, your cyanide, just to pension, but a few. So if you look at it, complex salt usually compl contain complex ion. And complex salt loses their identity in solution. It means that when you put a complex salt in water, all the ions will go their separate ways. They no longer behave as an entity. And that's what we mean here by they will lose their identity when in solution. Example is potas uh, potassium 
ferrous hexacyanide. Potassium ferrous hexacyanide. And you can also see copper, copper 2 tetraamine tetraoxosulfate 6 as the case might be. So these are examples of complex sorts as we have been following. My wonderful student, it's a very simple topic and I'm sure that if you pay attention, you'll be able to grasp it 100%. And when you do that, it will be at the tip of your fingers when question comes in your examination and you'll be able to carry out the answer smoothly. Now, the method of preparation of salt. There are several methods of preparation of salt, but we are going to group them into two, uh, two top topics. Uh, method of preparation of soluble salts and method of preparation of insoluble salts. If you have followed our class earlier on, you will have seen we have mentioned how salts can be prepared when we are discussing acid and also when we are discussing base. Now, one of the methods of preparation of your salt is by direct action of some metal with acid. Direct action of some metal with, uh, with, some, uh, with acid. Example of such metal is zinc. When you plus zinc with hydrochloric acid, you will get zinc chloride and hydrogen gas will be liberated. And what do we mean by some metals? It means those metals that are above hydrogen on the electrochemical series. Meaning that metals like copper, platinum, mercury, silver, and gold cannot displace hydrogen in a Like this. Now the other one is action of insoluble base on acid. Remember in our last class we told you that base can be soluble and insoluble. An example is copper oxide. When you react copper oxide with hydrochloric acid, you will get a salt, copper chloride plus water. And uh, the next one is action of trioxocarbonate 4 with acid. Remember we said when trioxocarbonate 4 reacts with acid, carbon 4 oxide is always liberated. And so in this reaction, let 2 trioxocarbonate 4 plus trioxonitrate 5 acid, which is HNO3, I will give you let 2 nitrate plus water plus carbon 4 oxide that is liberated. Remember I said carbon 4 oxide is a gas that turns lime water milky and it's an acid and hydride. It dissolves in water to give a weak carbonic acid. Now, my students, you find out that we'll be talking about method of preparation of insoluble salts. Now, those salts that are not soluble, how can you prepare them? Of course, uh, okay, it's a continuation of method of preparation of soluble salts. So we have neutralization reaction. In my last class, I said neutralization reaction is the reaction between an acid and base to give salt and water only. And by that definition, you find out that during neutralization reaction, salts are usually produced or prepared as the case might be. Looking at the equation, you have an acid HCl, you have a base potassium hydroxide, then of course the salt is potassium chloride plus water. Now, when you are preparing your insoluble salt, this is very, very important when you are carrying out your qualitative analysis. You find out that precipitates will always come out. Now, these precipitates are usually insoluble salts. And these insoluble salts are prepared by precipitation, by double decomposition. And I give you an example of that. You see that calcium trioxonitrate 5 plus sodium tetraoxide 6 to give you calcium tetraoxide 6 plus sodium trioxonitrate 5. Now what happens in this equation is that each of the reagents will decompose and of course they will exchange their anion. You can see that the anion of calcium trioxonitrate 5 comes to sodium and the anion of sodium goes to calcium and that is what we refer to as double decomposition and these precipitates are formed as insoluble salts. My students, how time flies. I'll be looking at the uses of salts. How do we use salt? I know if I ask you that question at home, what will come to your mind is that these salts are used for cooking. But apart from cooking, there are so many other uses of salt. You can see that sodium chloride is used as stable salt. salt uh, salts are used in fertilizers. Example is potassium trioxonitrate 5. Then we have ammonium trioxonitrate 5. 
Then magnesium tetrahydrate 6 is used as laxative and do liver salt when your stomach or you understand what I'm saying. Then we have calcium trihydrocarbonate 4 which is used in the manufacturing of salt. Of course, silver, uh, salts of silver halides are used in photography. And lastly, alum is used for coagulation in water treatment and copper 2 tetrahydrate 6 is used in the treatment of swimming pool. And that is why the water and swimming pool will always look blue in color. Buffer solution. A buffer solution is a solution that releases, resists a slight change in pH when an acid or base is added to it. And uh, we, they have conjugate base and conjugate acid. Example of a, uh, a buffer is ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. So many other examples like ammonia and ammonium chloride. Now, these salts have features, characteristics. It can be hygroscopic deliquescent or a fluorescence. Now what is the difference between these three? Hygroscopy is a phenomenon that exists when substances that are exposed to the atmosphere absorb moisture but does not turn into solution. When substances that are, are, are exposed to the atmosphere absorb moisture but does not turn into a solution and they are called hygroscopic substances. You can see example is calcium oxide, concentrated tetrahydrate 6 acid, and copper oxide. The next one is deliquescent. Deliquescent is slightly different because it's a phenomenon that exists when a substance absorbs moisture from the atmosphere and turn into solution. When a substance absorbs moisture from the atmosphere and turns into a solution. Now examples are magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ETC. My wonderful student, note that when you expose substances to the atmosphere, when they are hygroscopic or deliquescent, they will increase in mass because of the water they have absorbed. And they are usually used as desiccant or drying agent. Little under, when you buy a leather shoe or bag, you find a tiny material in an envelope in that bag. It's written silica gel on it. It's usually a, de a desiccant or a drying agent. So, the efflorescent is different from these two and is a phenomenon that exists when a substance that is absorbed to the atmosphere loses part or all of its water of crystallization. As we can see the case here, we have iron tetrahydrate, iron 2 tetrahydrate 6, heptahydrate, we have sodium trihydrocarbonate 4, decahydrate, sodium tetrahydrate 6, decahydrate. These are all uh, efflorescent salts. Lastly, my students, water of crystallization. What is water of crystallization? Water of crystallization is a definite amount of water molecule or a fixed amount of water molecule contains in one mole of a substance. And as you can see, copper 2 tetrahydrate 6 contains five molecules of water of crystallization. And that's why we call it copper 2 tetrahydrate 6 pentahydrate. In exams, students can be asked to differentiate between hydrated salt and anhydrous salt. The difference between them is that hydrated salt contains water of crystallization and anhydrous salt does not contain water of crystallization. Time has come for me to go. I wish I can stay longer, but I'm sure.